So ChatGPT just released their own desktop version. At the moment, it's only available for Mac. And if you're on a Windows, it means you're tough out of luck just for now. But they also plan on releasing it for Windows within the next few weeks, at least according to what they're saying. In this video, I'm going to show you what you can do with the desktop version. So you'll be able to decide if it's the right fit for you. So if we jump onto the Mac and look at the ChatGPT version, as you can see here, I'm on a Windows and I'm just connecting to a Mac to make it easier to record this video. However, once you log into your Mac, you get the icon up here. So after you install it, you're able to toggle this shortcut with a hotkey that you can set yourself and you're able to message ChatGPT on top of any application that you are using. So if you say, okay, so I know what's the best doc to adopt or to adapt, I know what's the best doc to adopt from a shelter and you hit enter, that will immediately open up a new chat window within ChatGPT. It's pretty similar to the web version. So you have the model that you can use up here. And at the moment, you can choose between GPT 4.0, GPT 4, and GPT 3.5. So I'm using GPT 4.0 at this stage. You can also use the temporary chat, which is kind of the incognito view for chat GPT. You get your output on the main window here. And you also get a history of all the conversations you've had with ChatGPT on the left-hand side. So this is pretty similar to the web version. Some other features that you get with this desktop app is that you can upload files directly to the desktop version. You can upload photos. You can take screenshot from ChatGPT or of your entire screen, or you can even take photos. So if, you, I take, if I say take screenshot of my entire screen, I need to give ChatGPT some permissions. And once that is done, it will take a screenshot of my desktop. So that is what it is able to see. I can also import files and folders directly into it. So if I start a new chat, put in that image and ask ChatGPT, what can you see in this image? What else should I include? But basically, I want to see if it's able to understand the context of the image. So as you can see, there is to contact, contacted and not interested and value. So it says the image shows a form or a user interface with several fields. The fields visible are labeled to contact, contacted, not interested and value. The value field is currently active and the for input as indicated by the blue outline around it. Fair. And then it says to enhance this form or interface, consider including the following elements, labels for each field, instructions, validation, submit additional fields, organizational headers, styling, etc. So it's pretty much understanding that this could be being used in the context of some sort of, I don't know, CRM or a way to organize data. And it's giving me ideas for how to build up on that. So it's taking the context and adding its value and its own thing to it. So this is the take screenshot or basically importing data into ChatGPT. There's also the microphone, so I can interact directly with it through the microphone, or I can click on the headphones here and have it basically be listening to what I'm saying. So if I say, hey, ChatGPT, I'm just recording a video about your capabilities. Is there anything that you would like to add to this video? Absolutely, that sounds great. If you're recording a video about my capabilities, here's a few points you might want to include. One, versatility. I can assist with a wide range of tasks from answering questions, helping with writing, providing suggestions, and even generate creative content like stories or poetry. So as you can see, I also get the written version of the answers that ChatGPT has given. And this is pretty similar to what you get on the mobile app where you're able to speak to ChatGPT and have back-to-back -back conversations. At the moment, they're not really allowing anything as shown in the demonstration when GPT 4.0 was released, where there was a lot of interaction, a lot of understanding tonality, interrupting conversations and all that. So I think this is something that will be coming out in the next few weeks. But in the meantime, 
or these are some things that you can do with the chat gpt desktop app which as i said is available for mac so give it a shot if you feel that it could be helpful to your workflow what i have found and what i liked about it is that it can stay on an like second monitor and it allows me to just move between tasks as i'm going through them throughout my working day so in a way it's like an addition to my workflow without having to open up a new window and then close it and then kind of interrupting the whole flow so that's how i have been using it myself to help me with my productivity so i hope you found that useful don't forget to like and subscribe this channel so you will get future notifications when i create content about ai and if you want to learn how to make money with ai check out the link in the description where i have few ideas that will help you get started on this trend right now so check those out and i'll speak to you soon see ya